Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday in the Word. I'm Evan Gertner. I'm the pastor at our Shepherd Lutheran Church, and we're going through 60 essential Bible stories. We're starting to wind down. Today, we're at the day of Pentecost, uh, which in 2023 was on May 28th. It's uh, 50 days after Easter. It's a celebration of the arrival of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, equipping them to proclaim God's Word in a way that people can hear it and have their lives transformed. The text for today, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking, saying, they were filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, Let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy, and they shall wonder as in the heavens above, and they will show wonders in heavens above, and signs on earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's our text for today, and in this text is a promise that the Spirit is arriving in, I want you to notice the the language that was used, like a mighty rushing wind, like tongues of fire rested upon them and on all of them. There's this expansiveness to all the believers that were gathered in that house. Peter may step forward and speak as he stands with the other 11, as he stands with the 11, you know, so what, uh, the other 11, but it's not, it's not just Peter alone or it's not just a few alone. All in the church in that moment were given the Spirit to proclaim the good news. The day of Pentecost is not about something that happens to just a few people in the past. It's about the promise that comes to the church in an ongoing, continuing basis. That the Spirit is arriving upon His people and we are being equipped to share the good news of Jesus in a way that people can hear the mighty works of God, that they can see the the wonders of the heavens above and the works of God in the earth below. This this expansive promise on the day of Pentecost is illustrated every time you tell someone about Jesus. This expansive promise about Jesus is illustrated every time someone hears in their own heart what God is doing. The church lives and it moves and it has her being through the gracious inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Without God's Spirit, I am certain that no one could come to or believe in Jesus. It is the Spirit that works through these words to transform and change hearts, to lead and guide people to the truth of God's life and salvation in Jesus. The 50th day celebration of Pentecost. It's a a celebration that the risen and ascended Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to be our sanctifier, to bring the holy, sanctifier means to the one that makes things holy, that the Spirit comes to be the sanctifier, to make us a holy people with holy words. 
And so what's the response of the people? Well, later in Acts, people say, as they're cut to the heart, brothers, what must we do to be saved? And Peter responds, repent, believe, and be baptized. That continues to be the response that God's Spirit leads people to have. Repent. Turn away from the salvation that comes through your own vanity, because it's no salvation at all. Believe in Jesus Christ. Be baptized. Have the waters of forgiveness, life, and salvation wash over you. Have God's name placed upon you in such a way that uh, you are marked as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. I'm going to read for you now from Martin Luther. For the love of God is so great that we are able to have confidence on the day of judgment on which the whole world will tremble. Isaiah 26, 28 says, Behold, I am laying in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Therefore, through the knowledge of this love, we also have faith, so that we can pass the muster of judgment. Thus Christ also warns by means of the parable of the fig tree in Luke 28, Look up, raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is what the blood of love which was shed for us does. The blood which is more precious than all the merits and deaths of all the saints. But the fact that we do not consider this fittingly and do not treat of this blood in a manner that is sufficiently fitting, this is due to our very education by which we've been brought up in various ways ever since our childhood to observe human traditions and inventions. The devil knows the weakness of the flesh, namely that we do not fittingly value the blood of Christ. Therefore, if consciousness of a great sin weighs down, comfort yourself with this blood of love. Surely the whole world does not grasp the tiniest syllable of the statement that God is love. No human religion can hold its own in the face of the judgment that God brings. But it is solely in the blood of Christ that we have confidence in the day of judgment. How do you know for the day of judgment that you are equipped and ready to stand fast? It's because the Spirit has changed your heart so that now you stand with Christ. The day of Pentecost is an essential Bible story that shapes the ongoing ministry of the church. Like many of these essential Bible stories we've been going through, Pentecost is not simply an event of the past. It is an ongoing character of the church. It is an ongoing character of the church that we trust in the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all manner of truth, especially the truth that though we are yet still sinners, Christ has died for us and risen again on the third day so that we may have life in his name. Rejoice this day and each day that the Spirit is with you and he has equipped you to share the good news with Jesus. All right, let's uh, close with a prayer here. Let me get that prayer open that I want to share with you. Oh God, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's peace be with you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.